Our next guest is a familiar face in Connecticut's political landscape. Nancy Wyman has been state comptroller for 16 years, which is basically the state's chief financial officer, you could say. In that role, she also oversees the state's health plan for state workers. She is a former state representative from Tolland. She is a married mother of two children, and she has five grandchildren. And now she is also the Democratic endorsed candidate for lieutenant governor. Nancy, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I was just saying, I haven't seen you in so long. I, I mean, except for on television, following <laughs> you and Dan as you've gone along the state. You know, I wanted to ask you, um, particularly, you know, as the state's money manager, mm -hmm. watching the um, General Assembly battle over the budget, is it ever frustrating to you in terms of um, seeing how they make their decisions and the final decisions that they make? Yeah, it's very <laughs> frustrating. And that's why one of the reasons I'm taking this step up, it's, it'll be a place where I think I can add to that conversation and right. try to calm it bent down a little bit. We need to change our budget system and we have to take care of this budget. And right now we have a, we're in a fiscal crisis in the state and this country and uh, we've got to come out of this. We've got to make our state, Connecticut, a better state for everybody to live in. Are there things that you think that they could have done that they did not do or perhaps that they did that you thought they shouldn't have done? Yeah, that, there, there's probably a lot of it, but the mm -hmm. first thing I've always said is that we cannot fill the budget hole or, the, or hurt the bu budget by filling it hole with one-shot deals. So if we had surpluses, they were using it for ongoing programs. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to meet your obligations. You couldn't do it in your home, and, and nobody should be doing it in, in their home. What we need to do is we have to be honest with the people of the state. Tell the people of the state the real numbers. Let's stop playing the games. We need to be honest and tough, get this thing taken care of because we're going to be facing a very large deficit. But if you do um, tell them the real numbers, I mean, are we in too deep of a hole at this point to, uh, to meet our obligations without, you know, getting enormous amounts of, say, federal stimulus money or borrowing from the rainy day fund? I mean, can we do it? Well, we have to because, you know what, the stimulus money is going to stop. Mm -hmm. The rainy day fund gets drained. Mm -hmm. What do we have to do? And now we're going to be in a bigger mess than taking care of, at one point we had a structural deficit of a half a billion dollars. Now when the next governor walks in in January, he's going to be looking at a budget deficit of probably $3.5 million billion dollars or $4 billion. Now that's the kind of money, that's, big, that's a lot of money, that's 20% of our budget. You can't, you have to go in there and you have to uh, curtail spending in the state. Do, do you envision that uh, in your role, if you were to become lieutenant governor, you would be, um, it would be a different role than lieutenant governors now? Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you would be more involved. Yes, I am going to be. You know, when um, I wasn't going to run for lieutenant governor right. before, I had announced to be state controller again. I love my job. It would be great to do it again. But Dan Malloy and I talked and have been talking for a, a long time. And as I saw the, the how bad things were going in the state, and I, more and more than I met Dan and know Dan, uh, he has said to me, Nancy, I want you as my partner. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I didn't do this very quickly, of making that choice. But as I saw the, the decline in our fiscal conditions, as I saw that things had to be taken care of and changed, and as I realized what Dan wants to do, I, I couldn't say anything but yes, that we, I would go forward with him. Um, he is truly a leader. He has a man here is the first governor we've seen in a long time with vision that has a background on tackling the problems. Look, you, the difference in Stanford right now compared to when he first came in 14 years previously is a big difference. Well, we need that kind of experience to get us out of this fiscal crisis, get us on the right road to recovery. So this is not Dan's uh, first run at this. Uh, do you think this time around he's going to have the uh, name recognition? What do you think is going to be the difference this time? I think right now the di difference is that Dan has a good record. Mm -hmm. I think the fact is that Dan is working very, very hard and we're seeing the changes. We're seeing when we go out there, when we talk about the issues. People are very, very interested in the issues. It's not, you know, who you like and who you don't like. It's who's going to have the strength to go in there. Dan and I bring different things to the table. You know, I bring my background of knowledge of this budget and what's going on in the state and how we can change state government and my health care uh, portion of it. Mm -hmm. So I bring that in my portfolio. Dan brings a record of success 
address in Stanford that talks about bringing jobs to the state, you know, growing the state. More people moved into his, his city um, and, and during the time that everybody else was leaving the state mm -hmm. because Dan knew how to lead. He's active, he's hands-on, and that's what we need. We need somebody that's going to be hands-on. I did notice that this week he got the endorsement of the state's largest union, which uh, obviously is a good endorsement to have, but also, don't you think it could make it kind of tricky because you'll have to turn. I mean, if you're going to tackle the budget, you will have to ask the unions to um, help you do that. Absolutely. And perhaps make uh, more concessions. And, and will it make it dicey if... Uh, you know, you have that tight of a relationship. You know that, that the reason that Dan was uh, endorsed by them is because he was honest with them. They're going to be at the table. They have to be at the table to help fix this thing. Mm -hmm. They come with ideas that nobody listened to before mm -hmm. of how can we downside this. You know, we have to get in there and change state government. You can't do it from the top down. Mm -hmm. You got to do it from the bottom up. We got to be sitting with the employees and say, what programs are not really working? Mm -hmm. Where can we find the savings? They know how to do that. And we're not scared to sit down with them. And they're not scared to sit down with us. Because we understand that jobs are important for state employees also. Most people don't even know that we have 80 to 100 people that retire every month from the state. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them might not have to be replaced. What we can do is train some of the people that are there and move them into the jobs that are necessary. This isn't a fight. This is, they live in the state. They pay taxes in the state. These state employees want to see the state run better. And so I don't think it's a fight at all. All right. Let me ask you, we have less than a minute, but I wanted to get your opinion about, um, you know, not only in your race, but in all of the races, a lot of money is being spent by a lot of people. Mm. Um, recently, the uh, federal appeals court obviously made a ruling on the campaign finance law. Do you think uh, that Lieutenant Governor um, Fideli should have, should have gotten the $2 million? I do. I really do. He, he played by the rules. He had the, you know, he had all the, and they, and they ruled in favor of him. Um, you know, I, we sent the check out. Uh, that's my job. Uh, you know what? The camp, the clean finance laws are good for us. They, uh, myself and Dan Malloy are living under it. Uh, and I think it, it's good. It keeps a lot of special interests out. Of it. Interesting. All right. Well, we wish you good luck. I know Thank it's going to be a tough fight, and uh, we are certainly watching it very, um, with a lot of interest. Thank Thanks, you Nancy, so much. for being here. Thank